Among many things, the Washington budget impasse has closed the waters of Biscayne, Dry Tortugas, and Everglades National Parks. Now, agitated fishing guides and park users spearheaded a rally telling federal officials that they want access to their fishing grounds back. This morning, I'll talk with one of the organizers of the rally. Tad, thank you so much for joining me here today. Now, Tad, these are just three national parks out of so many across the nation that have closed. Do you have any statistics on the number of visitors who come to national parks throughout the month of October? Yes, I do, and I wanted to say thanks, Jenna, because basically what we've been trying to do is raise public awareness. And actually, there are 400 national parks and open-air monuments that are currently closed to not only professionals, but users as well. So the American people can access our national parks as well as professional working guides. From the National Park website statistics, there are 717,000 people that would be visiting their national parks in the month of October. Fall is beautiful everywhere. People like to get out, they like to go experience their national parks. And like I say, this is not just so much about working professionals, but even working families that spent their whole week working and take their kids camping on the weekends, take their kids out into the wilderness, these last wild areas, American parks, national parks are an American heritage. So they're accessed by a lot of users around the country. And right now, we are not the only ones frustrated. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people everywhere are frustrated. And also a lot of fishing guides are frustrated right now because October is a really busy time of the year for guides on the water. Absolutely. And I think small businesses are basically the backbone of our country. There are many gateway communities to national parks. Ours being the Florida Keys is a gateway community to Everglades National Park and Biscayne. And right now, currently, I wouldn't say, wouldn't know the exact numbers for financially what we're losing. I know that guides are having days canceled because they can't access the park. The wind is starting to pick up. And Florida Bay actually gives us access to a lot of shallow protected water for us to take our clients, not only fishing, but for bird life, wildlife, and just to be in the outdoors. The rally that you just held on this past Wednesday, you had such a great turnout. I mean, you probably had 100 boats there on Wednesday, and everybody was expressing the same concern, and they were having the same effect, which was losing money. Absolutely. The, Keys, the Florida Keys is basically a fishing-based economy. People come here to fish. So whether you're an air conditioner repairman or a furniture salesman or a doctor or an attorney, chances are your money eventually comes to this community through people that come here to fish. Now you were one of the organizers of the rally and I guess my question to you is what was your main purpose with spearheading this rally on Wednesday? We basically wanted to put a personal face, send the message to Congress that this is affecting the small businesses of the nation. And this is not directed at our superintendents of Biscayne or Everglades National Park, both of which the Florida Keys Fishing Guides Association has built very good working relationships with. This is coming from the Department of the Interior and Congress shutting down these national parks. Basically, the message that we wanted to get out yesterday was to raise a public awareness and at our frustration, because while Congress is continuing to be paid, they figured out a way that they're possibly, most probably going to pay government employees that are currently furloughed, getting a paid vacation. We, on the water every day that can't use our national parks are losing money. I don't know the statistics for local, but I know that nationwide gateway communities and the support businesses that around national parks are basically losing around $70 million a day in revenue. $70 million a day in revenue. That's disgusting how large of a number that is. Tad, do you feel like your mission was accomplished on Wednesday? I don't think our mission will be ac accomplished completely until Congress opens up our national parks. In 1903, when Teddy Roosevelt dedicated the arches at Yellowstone National Park, his speech was, the parks are for the enjoyment and the benefit of the people. Right now, Congress is in charge of managing our national parks, which they are doing a relatively poor job at. National parks are constantly gutted by their, their budgets, are nat constantly gutted. They work on a skeleton staff. So private industry steps up, 501c3s, non-for-profits step up, donate money to our national parks. We are doing our best to support our national parks. Guides in the Upper Keys, 350 permitted guys in the Upper Keys have all the permits necessary, pay for our permits, pay for a million dollars liability cover coverage to protect the government, 
and we're still not able to access the park to go out and do our jobs and go to work. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say that one good thing that ha also has come of this on Wednesday, I think a lot of good things, in fact, though, has come of this because you've got your voice out, you've got your faces out, but you do have support from Congressman Joe Garcia. Yes, we do, and we're so thankful, and we feel like he really gets it, mm -hmm. that coastal communities, especially in South Florida, are really feeling the effect of the government shutdown of our national parks. And like I say, it's not just for working professionals. It is the support industry and the people that come here and the working families. People in Miami who work all week so they can take their kids to go camping in Big Cypress or take their kids to go fishing in Everglades City or Florida Bay or Biscayne Bay or a trip to the Dry Tortugas. They're not allowed to do that. And that there is nothing right with that picture. There isn't at all. Tad, thank you so much for being on with me this morning. It was a pleasure. Thank you for your time. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.